Hello, everyone. So this is just a quick, uh, well, a public service announcement, let's say. And uh, I just wanted to point out something that might affect you if you're looking for jobs, if you're looking uh, to be hired by translation agencies. And also because stuff like this occurs every now and then, so I wanted to bring it up and just show you how I deal with it. And basically what happened was I came across this article. It says federal court tosses lawsuit over forced company sale. And as far as I, could, I can understand, what happened is there's this company called uh, TransPerfect Global which is, uh, it was set up by this guy, Philip Shaw, and his former fiance, Elizabeth Elting. And what happened was they had a fight. You, said, you can see it says former fiance, which means that they are not together anymore. And um, this probably, you know, they had personal problems, which probably kind of came to be reflected in the business itself. So, I mean, the, the, the article here is just saying they tried to uh, appeal, or I guess to dismiss the lawsuit or sorry, they had a lawsuit challenging the judge's decision and that lawsuit was dismissed by the federal court. In essence, upholding the ju judge's decision before because their relationship had become dysfunctional. Again, why, why do you care, right? You know, this is semi-interesting because it's the translation world, but why would, should we care in our day-to-day -day lives? Well, because this might be a company that we might have to do with in the future or might try to hire us. You know, it might still be in business, this company. And so we should just kind of keep it on our radar. What I like to do in this situation is go to the blue board of pros. The blue board is where they keep track of the job outsourcers, basically the translation agencies, the people that hire translators. This is where they keep track of them. And so if we insert the name, TransPerfect, there we go. We get a couple examples. I'm gonna go with this one because it has 151 entries and seems um, to be the biggest one. So, you know, if we click on here, then we can see uh, I had an average of 3.9, which isn't that bad. Remember it's out of five though, so it's not all that good either. Um, and here we can just look at uh, the entries they have. Now the top pinned entry, remember it's pinned by the company. So, I mean, you know, don't put too much stock in that. But here we see the other ones and we see four, one, two, two, three, three, you know, we see one, five, otherwise two, one, another five, three, two, five, five, five. And, and there are more fives, but still lately they've been having quite a few issues. It seems most of these things, you know, if they don't have a five, they should have a reason for not having it. Um, and, and if you compare it to any other company, you'll see that most of them tend to have fives. See, even here with a four, he says, steady provider, good PMs, only hitches, very bureaucratic payment system, simply not worth doing small jobs for them. You know, so already there's something wrong with that. Every now and then you'll get a one or a two because someone's just mad. Look, it's like Yelp or anything like that, right? But usually it should center around, you know, on the high end. What, you know, people, if they're going to give a score, they, they usually like to give it on the high end. And if they have a problem, they'll tell them personally. And that's how people usually deal with it. So these are a bunch of red flags. I don't know if this has anything to do with what's going on in the article, but usually when I see an article about a company having problems, I like to search for it and then, you know, see what's going on with the company itself on, um, on the blue board. And here, let me give another example of a company I had problems with in the past. And uh, it's this one, Intertrado. And you can see their average LWA is very low here, very few entries. I'm pretty sure they're out of business and I'm hoping it, that fact is reflected here. Yeah, Outsource has been banned from posting jobs in pros.com because they've just been, I mean, completely crap. And uh, they, well, in fact, someone unfortunately, relatively recently did something for them. I wrote uh, a bad review for them because I had problems with them. And uh, since then, yeah, she had someone write a very, good review but I'm you know I don't know I don't know who that was anyway she was a crook and um, and so a lot of these things will be reflected anytime you deal with any company actually it's a good idea to look them up on this blue board and it'll give you a good idea of what you're dealing with unfortunately this person right here if she or let's see this person sorry um, if she had looked up the um, this company ahead of time, she would have seen all these negative ratings, which, you know, hopefully should have helped her. She carried out three translations and didn't get paid. So, you know, that's not nothing. Anyway, long story short, whenever you come across the name of a company, whether it's in the news or anywhere else, 
Just a reminder to look them up on the blue board and, you know, to get a better idea about that company and whether you should be working for them or not and what problems there might be. So I hope you found this useful. If you do, please don't forget to click like because I really do appreciate that. And, um, and don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this in the future dealing with freelance translation and freelancing in general. Otherwise, I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.